Welcome to Astro Chat with Colonel Al Warden, Apollo 15 Command Module Pilot. Uh, Colonel Warden, we have some questions for you here today from our friends at Collect Space and on Facebook. Okay. So let's just get into it. This question is from Adam from the UK. If you could have flown on one other mission as well as Apollo 15, what would it have been and why? Um, I would have flown on any mission that went into space. Uh, the idea is to go into space. However, uh, if there had been a lunar flight that I could have gotten on, then I would certainly have, have opted for that. Jason Rubin from New Jersey asks um, that he unfortunately didn't have the chance to meet Jim Irwin. Um, did you and Jim keep in touch after your Apollo 15 flight through the early 90s? And we, could you share any quick stories um, about Irwin? Uh, yes, Jim and I kept in touch through the 90s. Uh, up until his death. Uh, as a matter of fact, I worked fairly closely with him on his, at his foundation, the High Flight Foundation, and I made several trips for him. Uh, when he had his first heart attack, I covered for him on many of his appearances. Uh, Jim was a very close friend and a, and a really, really good guy. Chris Bain from France would like to know, Apollo 18 was given the green light. This is completely hypothetical and you were chosen as commander, who would you want to fly with you? And why? Uh, let me set the stage for this. Every person who was in the astronaut office back then uh, was considered qualified to fly in space. So it, experience level didn't really mean that much prior to a flight. So if I had a chance to be the commander on a flight, I would have picked somebody who had not flown, um, like Paul Weitz, um, I would probably would have asked T.K. Mattingly to go along as CMP, uh, but that's pretty hypothetical because we never flew. Uh, but those are the people that I would have picked if I'd had the chance. Rob Joyner from Georgia would like to know who your childhood heroes were and which did you most admire? Uh, to be honest with you, my childhood hero was really my grandfather and my dad. Uh, they were the people, the, the ones that I looked up to. Um, I also liked a lot of cowboys back in those days because there were a lot of cowboy movies. Uh, but my real heroes were my dad and my grandfather. Along with that question, someone would like to know, um, which high school teacher had the greatest influence on your life? I had one teacher ha who had a tremendous influence on my life. Well, he wasn't actually my teacher. He was the principal of the high school that I attended. Uh, he was like a second father to me and he guided me through uh, my post high school uh, days, uh, uh, helping me uh, get a scholarship and then helping me uh, get an appointment to West Point. Uh, he was more than a principal, he was like part of my family. What are your thoughts, comments about the solar corona photographs and were you surprised by the results? Richard Jurek wants to know. Richard, uh, solar corona is a very interesting phenomenon, it's also a dangerous phenomenon. Uh, because when you get a flare off the, uh, uh, the sun and the corona, of course, is the gas that's being uh, uh, thrown off from the sun. Uh, if you get a concentration of that gas and becomes a flare, then you have a real problem uh, because it throws radiation out a long ways. And in fact, that's one of the uh, phenomena that we were mostly insulated for inside the spacecraft. And we would have a few minutes of warning if a flare came our way. Uh, to get ourselves um, sort of protected from the, from, the, from the flare. The solar corona is a, a pretty impressive phenomenon and something we need to keep track of because eventually the sun, the corona is going to uh, uh, react in such a way that uh, we, we will have some radiation problems. David from New Jersey would like to know, how do you feel about the fact that they don't teach Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo in schools today? I think that's a part of our history that's uh, very, very important uh, to the whole country and particularly to small children. Uh, I think the program was always a motivating factor for kids uh, going through school to get their science and engineering degrees. Uh, I, think it's, um, uh, I think it's kind of sad that they don't teach uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo today in schools. A question from right here in Titusville. Did you ever consider flying a long duration mission um, like Skylab or ISS? Never considered it because it was not an option for me. Uh, however, 
if it had been an option, I certainly would have uh, would have opted to do that. I would like to have done that. Jason from Kentucky would like to know your opinion on the future of the U.S. manned space flight, especially now that the shuttle program is ending. Um, pretty sad. I think it's uh, something that this country is giving up, even in for the short term. Uh, that has been kind of uh, epitome of what Americans can do. Uh, I think it's um, uh, tragic that we can't fund the space program the way it should be funded, because out of the space program comes an awful lot of technology that uh, finds its way into commercial production and makes the companies in this country more successful. Uh, on the, and on the other hand, I think we're losing our leadership role in the world in space. So yeah, it's a sad day. Uh, however, uh, on the other side of the coin, we've seen this same kind of cycle, uh, a lot of support and then a lot of negatives uh, about other programs like the Antarctic program. Uh, and sooner or later people are going to get interested in space again and start funding it. Uh, I guess the question is how long that will take.